the victims are justice of the peace, Honor Mandre, and her husband, Commander Jack Delaney. Didn't find any evidence of defense wounds. Obviously been shot from behind. There's been a shooting, and your parents have been fatally wounded. Do you know if uh, Jack Delaney ever kept a gun in the house? What was your statement made? Did he bring his own weapon? It was a Glock. Yeah, on the night he died, if I'd been at home, I think he would have been with me. Do you think anyone's on to us? No, why? Yeah, it's just something Zach said. If you think money is the only reason I'm well, here... three million quid in Mum's will is quite an incentive. Michael! You've no right to talk to me like Maybe that. Maybe you should look less like a vulture after Mum's money. You should at least look like the grieving son, even if you don't give a shit. Run a check on Paul Mandre for me, will you, Satch? He's very overprotective. You well, the guy is a barrister. Listen, the uh, girl that was with Michael is his girlfriend named Charlotte Rogers. She was wearing a whopper of a diamond and ruby ring. Why was she wearing it at his parents' funeral? Maybe Michael was involved. Hang on, this is time-coded up till after midnight, and the twins are there. Maybe they hired someone. Am I hearing this right? We've had no results from any of our known informants, fences, or jewellers. Yeah? And with a 50 grand reward up for grabs, we usually get a result. This time, nothing. Not even from banged-up old cons. Not a whimper. We haven't found the murder weapon yet, but we now know that Jack Delaney owned an illegal handgun. A Glock. Absolutely vital. We find this fast. So, we have a killer. Now, we reckon, knew the family was out, knew the layout of the house. So what are we looking at? Robbery that went wrong? The Delaney's movements. I want to know exactly where they were at every single stage of the evening, yeah? I've got her on the board up here. You two, listen up! In case any of you need reminding, we're dealing with the murder of a commander and a magistrate here. I need you all fully focused, understood? We need a result fast. We know what our priorities are. Check with the office manager for the details, but let's get moving and stay sharp. Such is back out at the theatre, but the, uh, the show didn't end till 10.30. They bought the tickets with a credit card. We've got the ticket stub, so we know they actually did go to the theatre. What about the restaurant? Yeah, we're still checking. Sam, yeah. could you get busy on that, please? What about the girlfriend with the diamond ring? Charlotte Rogers, I'm on it. Good, fast. I'm off for a tennis lesson. Mr. Phillips. Detective Chief Superintendent Mike Walker, we met at Delaney's funeral. Can we have a talk somewhere? No, the seat next to Delaney's was paid cash, but I got a credit card payment for the seats behind, so I'll uh, find out if they remember anything about them. Uh, we've got a possible in a restaurant place called Holland Satch. I need you to check it out for me. Apparently they were regulars. Yeah, we'll do it. Thanks. All right. Bye. According to Mrs. Delaney's diaries, you gave lessons to both her and her son, Michael. Did you mix with her at all socially? No, she would just play her session and then leave. But her husband didn't play? No. You just play with her. I'm getting what you're after, and no, it's just professional and nothing else. Did you ever get to meet the husband? Once. He turned up to watch her play. Jordan? Delaney! Jack! Delaney! Ring any fucking bells, eh? she give you the watch. Yeah. Christmas present. She was worried her husband would find out that Michael wasn't turning up. But she paid you. Yes. Sam, it's Rasheen. Uh, listen, the restaurant. Don't bother with it, okay? I've given it to Satch. Oh, leave it, will you, Sam? Listen, so I've just been talking to the article registrar. He says that Charlotte Rogers hasn't been here for ages. Yeah, seems to think that uh, she's had some kind of drug problem. Well, I've got her address. Yeah, flat in Camelwell. I'm on my way there now. Sorry, I've got a bad cold, so I've been in bed. Why did you want to see me? Why, Michael Delaney's girlfriend. Oh. Well, you ask him. I mean, I suppose after everything that's happened, he's pretty screwed up, but... Are you engaged? I don't know. 
You were wearing an engagement ring. <laughs> it's just a ring he gave me because he owes me some money. What happened to your face? After the funeral, we kind of carried on partying at his house. I wanted to leave, and Michael had my makeup back, so I went up to get it. Michael thought I was looking into his mother's room. We had an argument, and I fell. <laughs> How do you get on with Rory? Yeah, okay, I guess. Michael's really protective of him. Can I see the ring? Why? It's important. <sighs> it's mine. And if Michael doesn't pay me back, I'm going to sell it. Oh, I got some interesting news. Honor Delaney and her tennis coach were playing off court, and Jack knew all along. I find that hard to believe. So what now? We're saying the tennis coach is in the frame? Uh, Satch, what you get? Oh, I uh, spoke to a Mr. Gordon. He booked tickets directly behind the Delaney, so uh, they said they were there up until the second interval, but they didn't come back for the last act. It started about 9.30. Great. Did you get to Holland's? Oh, yeah. They booked a table for half past ten, but nobody turned up. So that means the most important outcome of the day is our time frame. If they did leave the theatre early, didn't go to the restaurant and came home, they could have disturbed our killer. I asked if you wanted a sandwich. No, no, no. I'll get something while I'm out. Well, you won't be going very far for that, will you? For Christ's sake! Honour! I am just bloody hungry! Seriously, Mike, what if the twins kill their parents? Regardless of the time frame we have, the parents coming home, they still have an alibi. OK, what if they hired somebody to do the burglary? I mean, it could have been their drug dealer friends. Come on. Charlotte said the ring was for money he owed her. Its value is five grand. No, no, no motive. We need evidence, not supposition. I am starving. I missed lunch. You won't find anything in there. It was your turn to do the shopping. Oh, shit. Oh, I'm sorry. Though tomorrow, I was trying to talk to Walker. I mean, the man is impossible. You know what? He even walked off with the CCTV footage from the nightclub that I wanted to watch tonight. Uh, machine. I've had it up to here today. I really don't want to talk about the case tonight. Okay. Mm. Mm, that'll be the pizza. Oh, good I get it. Dear. Pizza delivery. I was just about to ring your doorbell and you owe me six pounds ninety-five. <laughs> Mike, hello. Hi. Um, we were just doing some homework, so a um, glass of wine. Yeah, yeah, I'd love some. Thanks. Oh. Mm -hmm. And I have been watching this. Pizza. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd love some. And listen, I was going to call you. But I didn't, because I was thinking about the twins and their alibi, right? That's pretty solid, yeah? Yeah, I know, but ever since the funeral, it's been driving me mad. There was something that is not right, Mike. Oh, no. Do you want to sit down? Yeah, sit down, sir. I'll just get myself a glass. Oh. It's, um, kind of cosy. Yeah. Do you two, um, do extra work together? Hello? Just tonight. Hmm. Hey. Anyway, I think I'll come up with something. Yeah, if it's about that, I'm way ahead of you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But remember, we see the boys sitting drinking together at the bar. Yeah, but they were making it so obvious. They're both, uh, they're talking to the barman. Yeah, and then we see one of them dancing. Yeah, and then the other one's talking to the barman and they're walking in front of the CC mm -hmm. camera. Backwards, forwards, but we never see them both together again. Only one of them stays at the club, Mike. Yeah. One of them scarpers, returns home and then comes back to the club again. And then they both turn up at the house together. 
Yeah. I don't know. But that's a lot of supposition. Yeah, but it's possible. Mm -hmm. Both came up with it. Yeah, you, yeah, you did. No, I was done. I mean, you two should do more homework together. I'll, um, we'll finish this tomorrow, will No. I'll take a picture with me, you know. See myself, right? Oh, God. The station is going to be buzzing with us in the morning. If it is the twins. Hmm? No, you, here. I mean, come on, Sam, if your brain had been working, you would have at least offered him a ride home. I'll catch up with them down the road. No point doing it now. Uh, thanks for making me feel like a right prick. Boss, the digitally enhanced CCTV's in from Denmark Hill. Ah, uh, sir. Thank you for the um, pizza last night. My pleasure. Mike paid for it. Morning. You're knocking her off, is he? Yeah, without a doubt. He's got his slippers under the bed. Very cosy. Oh, she wants to watch herself, especially off that slippery sort of a barrister she had. Yeah, it wouldn't work for me. What wouldn't? Oh, well, dusting down with a gov. I mean, I get enough trouble off the wife. Every time I put my foot over the door, I get a grilling, and she is like Miss Marpole on speed. <laughs> hey, how are you getting on with that new up here? She picks them on purpose. I mean, this one's got thighs like a rugby player and that sort of thin, wispy hair. Oh, they look identical to me. OK, there's Michael in the red. Rory in the green in front of him. There's Michael in the red top again. Yeah. Michael and... OK, Michael and Rory. 9.35, they're in the same frame together. OK, now we know the parents left the theatre at 9.30, right? Yeah. yeah, but if they knew what time the show went down, they would have thought the house was empty. That's Rory. Oh. I can't tell which one is which. Huh? Michael's in red, Satch. There's Rory again. Yeah, look at the time, look at the time. Yeah, but it's 10 past 10, so that's 35 minutes since they were last seen in the same shot. Now, that's Michael, I'm sure of it. Shit, hang on. Play that back for me. Oh, but... That's Rory. That is Rory in Michael's top. Look what he's doing, Mike. He's using his inhaler. I call Rory Delaney. I'm arresting you on suspicion of the murder of your parents, Jack and Honor Delaney. You do not have to say anything, but I may harm your defense if you do not mention when questioned something you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Take him away. I have to be with, I have to be with my brother, Rory. Right. Turn this base over. Present the boys, Vivian Newberg. She's just arrived. <laughs> Check out Walker's face when you mention her <laughs> name. Oh, and listen, I uh, leave the boys where they are, okay? Just let them stew. Yeah. Have you heard? Bloody woman. Mandrake's brought in Newberg. Yeah, she's throwing her weight around already? Yeah, 
And when the publicity these murders are going to get, she will grab all the limelight. You have Michael and Rory Delaney under arrest. I'm here to represent them. Both. Everything? So all so far. We've struck the ground. Well, come on, let's have a look. Rory. Well, you've been checking the CCTV footage from the nightclub, and it appeared to us, in actual fact, that you were impersonating Michael. And that he was not, as you stated, with you at the club all evening. Is that correct? Mr Delaney will not answer that question. Are you planning to show us this footage? Does Michael have asthma, Rory? You are asking questions of Rory Delaney. This sounds like a query for his brother. Because, you see, I thought you were the asthma sufferer. Does Michael have asthma, Rory? No. Well, then, can you explain to me why, on the CCTV footage, you can clearly see Michael using it? Again, this is a question for Michael Delaney. I'm advising my client not to answer any further questions. I'll just sod all. Sit down here. Michael. We have CCTV video recordings from the nightclub you visited to the night of your parents' murder. You stated you were there from 9.15 to sometime after 2 a.m. You still maintain you were there for the duration. No comment. I'm suggesting you left the club and were impersonated no by your comment. brother. No comment. We now know your father owned a band Glock handgun. This handgun was it kept in your mother's safe. Do you know where it is? You stated your parents were out at a play the night of their murder. We now know they left the play early. They did not go out to dinner later. Perhaps you just intended to steal your mother's jewellery. Given the nature of these questions and the lack of disclosure, my client will be making no comment. Hang on. Something's wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six. Nobody's going to believe me. I didn't do it. I swear to God. Look, Michael, you could be charged with murdering your parents. We have to start preparing. I got a couple of torches. Thanks, Look, you have to get us out of here. I think the evidence is flimsy. I'm having this CCTV footage checked. I'll do what I can. But, Michael, there needs to be something exceptional. Pacing out, it doesn't make sense. Give me a torch.
Look at this. This looks like it's been disturbed recently. Get out on me. What did he want you to do, Michael? Come on. You can tell me. I promise you. You'll feel better if you do. Come on. Come on. Come on. You <sighs> ain't. Chief Superintendent Walker, you are obviously aware that I have the right to be present with my client for as long as I please, and I Ms. don't... Miss Newberg, I just thought you might like to be privy to the new evidence we've discovered in the Delaney household. We would now like to re-interview both your clients. Rory Delaney first, please. But I need more time with my clients. It was my father's. He used it for target practice. We now know this is the gun used to kill your parents. <laughs> it was in the safe. He never meant to use it. He was scared. Do you realise what you just said, Rory? He never meant to use it. My client has admitted that what occurred at his home was a series of tragic events that culminated in the death of his parents. He is adamant that his brother played no part, absolutely no part, in this tragedy. That Rory... Excuse me for interrupting, Miss Newborn. Tragic events. That description of the horrific murder of Commander Delaney and his wife is a travesty. Take a look at your mother, Michael. Face. Broken, battered, shot three times. Next to your father, shot four times. From behind. Right. Anyway, how did it go? Oh, fine. Just going out for dinner time. Oh, well, thanks for consulting me. You call that a tragedy? I call a cold blooded murder. You wanted money? That was your sole motive. Money. You will now be charged with a murder of both your parents. Michael and Rory Delaney vehemently deny the charges against them. They are willing to indicate this from the very start. We're not guilty, OK? Not guilty. Uh, Mr Delaney, you are represented by an extremely able advocate who is addressing the court on your behalf. Uh, Mrs Johnson, the facts and objections to bail, please. Did you get? Oh, 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 o
Jesus Christ, I don't believe it. Conditional bail. Oh, on you, Berg's earning her dosh, isn't she? That little bastard killed him and she gives out this provoked manslaughter up, you shite. You know what that means? Michael Delaney could get off with a few months washing down fucking toilets. There's a suggestion that Michael was using drugs quite heavily and had stolen some of his mother's jewellery to pay for them. Did you know anything about that? Did Mrs. Delaney ever mention it to you? No. I, I knew she was concerned about Michael. But... Um, I think it's true. What is it? Maybe I should have realised it or spoken to Honor. Michael came to me asking for money. What money? He offered a diamond brooch as security. He, never told he me. said his grandmother what left it to him when she died. When the hell was it? I this? gave him five hundred pounds. He was desperate. It was and he never ago. paid the money. No, no, he never mentioned it again. Okay. Were the boys frightened of their father? Um, I had very little to do with him. I usually saw Honor when he wasn't there. There's also a suggestion that Michael might have hired someone. Well, where would he find what? or know someone like that? I heard on the news you let Michael out. Charlotte, we didn't. The court did. What's going to happen to me? I can't sleep. I'm so scared. He'll come after me. I know he will. OK, look, a very strict curfew has been placed on the twins. We will make sure it's not broken. You don't know him. What Michael wants, he gets. He came looking for me the night after the funeral. He was acting really crazy. Charlotte! Come on! What? He started wrecking my place looking for the ring. And I wouldn't give it to him. So he hit me. He kept on punching me. I need protection. Okay, we got a problem. Charlotte Rogers is terrified that Michael is going to find her. We're going to have to get her into rehab. What's she got? Is it worth it? Well, she can testify that he beat her up, that he almost raped her, and that he used her makeup to make himself look grief stricken at the funeral. Also, she's saying he was into speedballing. Oh, shit. Well, you better get her in somewhere. Out of London, maybe. She needs to be drug free for the trial. <laughs> See me? Yes. Um, Vivian Newberg mentioned that you wanted to represent Rory Delaney. Yes. I'm sure you've considered the ethics, but as head of chambers... I've spoken to the Bar Council, and I've considered paragraph 603D of the Code. And in my view, whether or not the twins are related to me is immaterial. And I can assure you I will be acting with total professional independence. Well... If you're sure, on your own head be it. Uh, I'm first on the indictment, so I'll be leading. It'll certainly be a high-profile case, Paul. Maybe just what you need at this point in your career. Yes. Just don't screw it up. One whiff that you're out of your depth and you'll be replaced. It will no doubt be suggested by the defense during the course of this trial that there was no plan to kill or to inflict the gruesome injuries that caused the horrifying death of Honor Delaney, nor the shooting in cold blood of Jack Delaney. You may well be asked to consider that Michael is not responsible in law for his actions and that Rory played no part at all in what the Crown say 
were murders of the most terrifying proportions. Members of the jury, it will be for you to decide, having evaluated the facts, that not only did Michael and Rory Delaney plan to kill their parents, but they knew what they were doing. They wanted to kill them. They meant to kill them. Tragically, they did kill them. You may consider that any attempt by the defense to minimize the culpability of the twins is a futile and desperate attempt to avoid conviction in the face of compelling evidence. With my Lord's leave, the prosecution call the first witness, uh, Janet Jenkins. Ms. Jenkins, can I ask you to look at these five bags of jewellery? Exhibit one, please, my lord. Mrs. Jenkins, have you seen them before? Uh, they, they look like some of Mrs. Delaney's jewellery. And where did Mrs. Delaney keep her jewellery? Some of it she kept in a jewellery box in her bureau. Um, the more expensive pieces she kept in the safe in the dressing room. Who knew the combination? Uh, just the family. But Mrs. Delaney had talked about changing it. Did Michael and Rory know it? Yes. And why was she thinking of changing it? I'm not sure. Was it because Michael Delaney was stealing jewellery from the safe? My lord, this witness has already said she doesn't know. <laughs> Mrs. Jenkins, do you know why Mrs. Delaney was talking of changing the combination? It might have been something to do with Michael. I'm not sure. Thank you. If you just stay there, please, the defence may have some questions. Mrs. Jenkins, I am representing Michael Delaney. The Delaneys were demanding parents, weren't they? In what way? Well, they demanded success. If the boys didn't meet Mr. Delaney's standards, they were punished, weren't they? Yes, but not often. And do you recall an occasion when you provided medical assistance to Michael following an assault by his father? Yes. Michael thought his nose was broken, but it wasn't. I put an ice pack on it. Mrs. Jenkins, you've been with the family for eight years. Were you aware that Mr. Delaney had sexually abused the boys? No. How would you describe Jack Delaney as a parent? He was firm but fair. Mr. Delaney just wanted the best for his sons. And it would be right also to say, wouldn't it, that he was firm but fair with you? I suppose so, yes. And this was on a rather more personal level than merely employer and employee. Oh, come, come, Mrs. Jenkins, we're all adults here. Let me spell it out for you. You were having an affair with Mr. Delaney, weren't you? Yes. No further questions? Mrs. Jenkins, I'm representing Rory Delaney. You've known Rory a long time. Yes. Would you agree he's a quiet young man? Yes, he's a sweet boy. Never stolen anything from his parents or anyone? No, never. When the boys were growing up, who was the dominant one? Michael or Rory? Michael. It's always Michael. Mr. Delaney and his sons were members of a shooting club? Yes. How did Rory react to being taken there? It upset him. I think he found the noise distressing. Have you ever heard the expression, pistol whipping? It's when a person hits another person with a gun. Were you aware that Commander Delaney had viciously attacked Rory in this way? I recall it, yes. But it was some time ago. 
Well, if she got on the bloody train, Satch, where the hell is she now? Charlotte Roger. Oh, damn it. Charlotte Roger. Oh, Satch, look, they're calling her now. No reply to call, my lord. Dr. Saunders, as an expert in your field, you agree that in situations where there's been a prolonged history of abuse, this can cause the abused immense emotional stress. Yes. That can culminate in a total loss of control. That's correct. You're aware that someone who was either so provoked or so impaired can be described as not criminally responsible for murder. In other words, he'd be guilty of manslaughter. Yes. My lord, this is a matter for the jury. I'm only setting out the defense position for Michael Delaney. No further questions. Dr. Saunders, I'm representing Rory Delaney. Have you examined his medical records? Yes. Uh, Rory suffers from acute asthma, and extreme stress can precipitate this condition. The dates of Rory's most extreme asthma attacks occurred at weekends, when the family went shooting. Anything else? Yes, when... Rory was aged 14. He was taken to accident and emergency with a broken arm. The records note that during his treatment, the attending doctor noticed physical tenderness and as a result examined Rory further, finding bruising between his thighs and around his coccyx. Also marks around his right upper arm consistent with finger marks. Was any further investigation made into this? It's noted that these injuries were attributed to a fall whilst practicing at a gun club. And does it say who gave this explanation? No. Moving on to the educational records. <laughs> yes, I, I can see from his school records that up to the age of eight, Rory Delaney was noted as developing normally with both social and educational skills and was mixing and making friends. Then? In later reports, his teacher notes he stopped socializing with others and became withdrawn and dependent on his brother for friendship. That coincides with his father forcing him to go shooting with him. Paul. <laughs> Jesus Christ, can't you do it? You can't even open a bloody thing. Press, pull, open. Yeah, look. Now, Dr. Saunders, would you agree that between twins there is often a dominant and a submissive relationship? Yes, that can be the case. And have you considered whether Michael has a history of manipulating Rory to act for him? I have never done that! No further questions. Mandry and line every time he opens his mouth, he's putting a noose around Michael's neck. No, I'm going to talk to him. There's no way you can run a cutthroat defense when I'm representing him. Dr. Saunders, there is no note of concern within the records from any professionals, is there? No. It's perhaps only when they're considered altogether that a pattern emerges. But no note of any complaint from either boy of any assault or abuse? No. But that's not, in my experience, unusual. And nothing to suggest, even if there were assault and abuse, who might be responsible. That's correct. Now, to set up a devious false alibi like this, you know, switching different colored tops, ensuring that the act is caught on CCTV, that shows someone using planning and control, doesn't it? Yes. But from what I understand about the... Thank you. There's no further questions. Uh, Dr. Saunders, uh, so that I'm clear, as a result of your considerations of the medical and educational records of the Delaney boys, uh, you found information that may be consistent with historical abuse. Yes. But also may not be. Well, yes. Thank you. You are released. Right. Ms. Wilson, I think you were going to call her Charlotte Rogers. 
Ms. Rogers, please, Asha. Charlotte Rogers. Charlotte Rogers. No answer to call, my lord. This is twice now, Ms. Wilson. Is there any likelihood of this witness attending? Don't start. They said she definitely got on the train. Yo, she's not answering her bloody mobile. Oh, great. That means I'm next up. Charlotte, come on. Answer your phone. Charlotte! I'm sorry. Sorry, I just can't face it. I'm not going into court. Okay. Charlotte, listen to me. You are a very valuable witness. Your testimony. Charlotte, look at me. Look at me, please. Do you want Michael to get off? Is that what you want, Charlotte? No. I'm just scared. Did Rory or Michael ever mention in an interview that they'd been physically or sexually abused by either of their parents? No, not at all. According to police records, is there any complaint about Mr. and Mrs. Delaney being abusive parents? None. They were exemplary members of the community. Let me have a look at you. You're gonna have to get that muck off your face, all right? Commander Delaney, of course, was one of your own, wasn't he? A senior policeman, yes, very highly respected. And when it was known that one of your own had been killed, the case received a lot of police attention, didn't it? As would happen in any case of such a serious nature. And, of course, you wouldn't want to damage a commander's reputation. We found nothing in this investigation that would damage it. Really, officer? During the course of this investigation, it has emerged that Mrs. Jenkins was having an affair with Commander Delaney. Did you uncover that during your investigation? No, we did not. My lord, I can't we see have how this bears any relation Delaney to the Delaney case. viciously attacked Michael Delaney and his brother Rory on numerous occasions. It is not in dispute that he owned an illegal handgun, tragically, the gun that was used to kill him. Not quite the unblemished character you make him out to be, would you agree? Probably not, but I believe there are two sides. Mr. and Mrs. Delaney went regularly to the theater and then on to dinner, didn't they? It was their normal Friday night. According to the diary notes, yes. And the boys would go out clubbing. Yes, I believe that to be correct. Mr. and Mrs. Delaney returned home early on the night of the murder, having missed their dinner and some of the play. That's correct. So the boys couldn't possibly have known that this was going to happen, and therefore nor could they have hatched a premeditated plan to murder their parents. Mr. Clayton, you're well aware the witness cannot answer that. Detective Chief Superintendent Walker, your investigation is fundamentally flawed, isn't it? Take your jacket off. You're gonna wear my shirt, okay? Here you go. Put that on. Okay, pop on. Um, can you take your earrings out? Earrings need to come out. Necklace needs to come off. Let me do that up for you. Miss Wilson. I now ask for Charlotte Rogers to be called. Charlotte Roger. Charlotte Rogers.
Miss Rogers, on the day of the Delaney's funeral, Michael used your makeup, whitening his face, red eyeshadow. Why do you think he did this? He wanted to appear more upset, grief stricken. Now, moving on to the night after the funeral, when Michael Delaney came to your flat, can you tell us what happened that night? I opened the door. Michael wanted the ring back. He threatened me. He tried to rape me. So you went to the police because you were afraid of what Michael Delaney would do to you? Yes, Mum. I was frightened of him. I didn't feel safe in my own flat. No further questions. Miss Rogers, may I make it quite clear from the start that my position is that your evidence is a pack of lies. It isn't. You targeted Michael Delaney. You thought he was a young, rich boy whom you could use. That is not right. You introduced him to drugs. He was into far more than me. He'd try anything. He started speedballing. Uh, my lord, that is heroin and crack cocaine combined. I am aware of that, Mr. Clayton. Thank you. You said that he gave you a family ring worth £5,000, even though he owed you only £750. Yes. You knew Michael had a difficult relationship with his parents. He said he hated them. You knew he was a vulnerable young boy. And you thought you could use him. I think the witness has already answered that question. I'll move on, my lord. Now, you've known Michael about seven months. Yes. And you knew his life was getting worse at home, and you did everything you could to make him more vulnerable. That is not true. I didn't hit myself, did I? He did. Well, let's look at that for a moment, shall we? He came to you devastated and confused, and you could see your gravy train disappearing round the mountain. He slapped me around after his own parents' funeral. Then the next night, he came back, and he beat me up, and he tried to rape me. I said I was going to call the police. And he said that if I did, I would get the same punishment as his parents got. And that he'd get away with it. You expect this court to believe that Michael threatened you with the same punishment his parents got? Yeah. It's the truth. Why did you fail to mention it in the statement you made to the police? A statement, by the way, which was only made after the twins were released on bail. If Michael hadn't been let out on bail, I wouldn't have had to go to the police. I wouldn't have needed the protection. No further questions. I looked a complete arse in there, and now we are in serious trouble. Do you understand what that means? This obviously undermines the entire defence. Oh, Christ, you don't have to tell me. I'm just going to have to wing it. Uh, let's put Rory on the stand first. Give us some time to think. Christ knows how I'm going to fix this. Michael's in trouble, isn't he? I'll be there to help you, Rory. Just keep steady and trust me. I'll do whatever's best for Michael. Mr. Delaney, can you give your full name and age to the court? Rory Paul Delaney. I'm 18. Thank you. Now, please remember to keep your voice loud and clear so that everyone on the jury can hear you. Now, we've heard evidence of what happened to you when you were younger, the abuse you discussed with Dr. Saunders. Yes. I understand this is hard for you, but were those things true? Yes. Uh, please, Mr. Delaney, keep your voice up. Uh, yes. Sorry. What really happened when you broke your arm at the gun club? Dad made me go shooting with him and Michael. I hated it. The noise, it made me nervous, and I wasn't any good. Dad would always get into a fury. And on this particular occasion? He made me do an exercise there. He said I was a wimp. 
and he was hitting me with a gun and my arm broke. Did you tell anyone? I was scared. Michael tried to stop him. He always looked out for me. Did he behave like this with Michael? I, I don't know. Michael's a good shot. Why didn't you tell your mother? She knew. Anna Delaney was a very cold, arrogant woman who cared more about her reputation than anything else. She said I should stand up to him and not let him bully me. I needed to grow up. The court has been told that you and Michael staged a burglary on the night your parents died. Is this true? Yes. Michael needed some money. Mama said she was going to tell Dad what he'd been doing. Which was? That he'd failed his exams and that she'd had money and jewellery go missing. If she'd have told your father, what do you think would have happened? He would have killed Michael. So Michael planned this burglary? We knew they'd be out and it was Janet's night off. And you agreed to swap your top with Michael's on the club CCTV to give him an alibi? Yes. And then? He came back to the club. We were in the toilets. He was in a total state. I've never seen him like that. He couldn't speak properly and he was shaking. He said Mum had come back and there'd been a huge row and he'd fought her. Did you know Michael was going to kill them? <laughs> he wasn't. It was all so horrible. A big mistake. In your relationship, he is the one who makes all the decisions, tells you what to do. Michael has admitted using drugs. Do you? No. Michael has admitted stealing from his mother. No, did you? but... You didn't even know about the burglary, did you? Yes, I did. Michael, having brutally attacked your mother, then took the gun from the safe and went down the stairs, he saw your father in the den and shot him from behind. No, that's not what happened. It was happened. a cold-blooded killing by a man who knew no, what he was doing. Tell them the truth, Rory. Tell them that you went back home. Get off me. Tell them that you went back home. Tell them that you went back home. Sit down. Sit down. Mr. Clayton, following the disturbance from your client, I am minded to remove bail and remand him in custody. We will reconvene at 9 a.m. tomorrow. I need a large scotch. <laughs> Rory, everything your barrister suggested yesterday, that's not the truth, is it? No, it's not. Michael didn't mean to kill them, but he did. Now, that's true, isn't it? No. No? No, it's not true. I killed my father. Not Michael, it was me. When I got back to the house, Dad wasn't there. I went up to the bedroom and... I saw Mum was dead. Michael had told me they had a terrible fight. I went back to tidy up and get rid of the evidence. You know, make it look like there had been a robbery. I put on the rubber gloves and Michael's jacket. He was in such a state, he'd just left everything. So I had to tidy up. I picked up the hammer and the screwdriver. There was blood all over them. I don't know where Dad was, but he must have been away for a while. Maybe he went to get something to eat.
Then I heard Dad come back. He went into the den and turned on the television. It was like a dream. And then I shot him. I shot my dad, I killed him. And this is what happened? Yes. You're lying, aren't you? No. Not anymore. This is all part of your plan with Michael, to keep changing your story, to confuse the situation. No. That's what happened. You love Michael very much, don't you? Yes. He's my brother. Everyone thinks he's strong, but he isn't. <laughs> he's my brother. My brother. You're trying to protect Michael, aren't you? No. No. I killed my father, not Michael. This is the truth, I swear to you it is. You've got to believe me. Boy, Delaney's not a killer. He's fine for Michael. Sarge? Yeah. I'm up until after midnight now. What about it? The last time the twins were seen in shots side by side was 11 o'clock, right? Yeah. Well, I've sat through the whole of the next hour, and sure enough, the colour of their tops changed, but they're never actually seen together. Um, what's your point exactly? Rory could have gone home. So what? Michael Delaney has admitted killing both his parents. But the rubber gloves were never fingerprinted. Oh! Come on, how much evidence do you want, Sam? The gloves had the mother's blood, the father's blood, Michael's DNA. I'm identical twins of identical DNA. Oh, yeah, he's a genius. I'll, um, see you tomorrow. Look, um... You gotta stop super sleuthing my team, Sam. If you've got a problem with me, Tell me. If that's what it feels like, that's certainly not my intention. Just let me get those gloves over to Amelia Street. No. We are mid-trial, Sam. Just let it go, okay? I'll see you tomorrow in court. You've got a set of my keys? I'd like them back, please. They're on your desk. Michael, you were the only one that could confront your father. Rory couldn't. Did you tell Rory to say that it was him that killed his father? No, I'd never do that. You were angry with your parents? Yes. 
And they were angry with you. Well, Dad was. Your mother was too. Well, yes, but not with Rory. He never did anything wrong. Ah. Rory had no reason to hurt his parents, did he? Well, nor did I. I know they're trying to blame me and not Rory, but what he said was the truth. Neither was meant for them to die. Mr. Delaney, did you ever intend for your parents to die that night? No, never. Then why did you claim that it was you who caused their deaths? I thought I could explain it better than Rory. But what he said was true. Yes, it was. Did you plan a burglary that night? Yes. I needed some money badly. It wasn't like they couldn't afford it. They would have got the money back off the insurance. So on that evening, you left the club and went back to the house? Yes. How did you feel when she came into the bedroom and saw you there? Scared, panicked, angry. And like she grabbed a hold of me. She said she was ashamed of me and started screaming about what Dad was going to do and she told him. And I was hitting at her, trying to get away. I grabbed a hammer. Dad! Mom! Dad! I just lost it. She kept coming at me. I'd seen the gun in the cell, so I picked it up and I shot her. Did you see your father while you were at home? No, he wasn't there. I know it looks like Rory and I had perfect, privileged lives, but it was horrible. Dad was... I never meant this to happen. Mr. Delaney, you are a compulsive liar. No, I've told some lies, but... You lie. You steal. You borrow money you don't pay back. You lash out when you don't get your own way, as you did with Charlotte Rogers, didn't you? <laughs> Initially, you told the police that you knew nothing about how your parents died. Didn't you? Yes. Are you lying about being abused by your father? No, I'm not. You lied about not stealing from your mother. This is not a burglary that went wrong, is it? No. You and Rory planned to kill your parents, and you carried out that plan brutally. Mr. Delaney, this is your opportunity to explain everything to the jury. And you choose to say... Nothing. It now falls to you to decide where the truth lies. Remember, when deliberating in this matter, you must all reach agreement so that you are satisfied you are sure. Nothing less will do. You will now retire to consider whether Michael Delaney killed both his mother and his father and conspired with his twin brother Rory so to do. So if that top print matches that of Rory Delaney's, that means he used the gloves after Michael, right? Gloves tested. Rory Delaney's 
right thumbprint was lifted from inside. The print beneath it belonged to Michael. So you went back to the house like he said and pulled the fucking trigger. And he killed his father. But we still don't have enough evidence to prove that conclusively. And we never did, Sam. Will the defendants stand? Will the foreman of the jury please stand? Please answer the next question, yes or no. Have the jury reached verdicts on this indictment on which they are all agreed? Yes. Is that on all counts? Yes. In respect of count one, do the jury find the defendant, Michael Delaney, guilty or not guilty of the murder of Jack Delaney? Guilty. And is that the verdict of you all? Yes. In respect of count two, do the jury find the defendant, Michael Delaney, guilty or not guilty of the murder of Honor Delaney? Guilty. And is that the verdict of you all? Yes. And on count three, do the jury find the defendant, Rory Delaney, guilty or not guilty of conspiracy to murder? Not guilty. But it's not right. That's not right. Please release Mr. Rory Delaney from the dock. Sir, so, come no, on. No, I'm staying with my girl. Let go. No. Let go. Get them but it's not right. Let go. Come on. It's not right. Come on.